When former footballer and now sports commentator Stan Collimore publicly revealed he'd been battling depression in 1999, he paved the way for players to speak candidly about their mental health. The issue of mental health in football is now under the spotlight once again, given the news that Everton midfielder Aaron Lennon was detained under the Mental Health Act recently. And Stan joins us now. Very good morning to you. Morning. When you talked about depression, anxiety and, and the downside of uh, being involved in football. What was the reaction you had? Um, look, it was back in 1999, so um, I went in to speak to first the physio and then went through a whole process, Went ended up in the Roehampton Priory, actually, which a lot of people think you're just going to sort of lie down and be on a chaise long getting fed grapes. It, it's a mental health institution. Um, but I spoke to the club, spoke to the manager and John Gregory at the time. Uh, and we've kind of made our peace in the, in the intervening years. But it was basically, how can somebody earning X amount a week be depressed? Mm. So if you're sort of 19, 20 now, with so many resources on social media that we use all very heavily, and you, you read those kind of comments from your boss or from a, 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 somebody that you respect, you'd think that was absurd. But at the time, in professional football and in life generally, that was the, the all-pervading attitude. There is still that attitude that persists, though. You have it all. You have a great yeah. life, you have a career that, you know, most young people involved in football would, can only dream of. Yeah. You're paid a huge amount of money, you've got all the popularity and attention. What is there to feel sad about? Um, and, and so what are people missing, the people I, who think that? I think that, well, well uh, quite simply, if, if I stood in front of a group of people that were sort of, uh, call them flat earthists, that would kind of say, well... Um, how can depression exist when you have material wealth? Um, I'd say, well, can I get cancer? Can I get AIDS? Can I get ME? The answer is, of course I can. And it is, a, it is a, an illness. It's just an, an illness that you can't see. You know, if, um, if somebody said the, the man-up comments from Piers the other day, that if I was on a football pitch and had a compound fracture and my bones were crossing each other and coming... You wouldn't be able to say man up and go and, you know, run it off. It's exactly the same with a, with a mental health But I was throwing back... I mean, I wasn't actually talking about people who uh, were mentally uh, yes, ill. Yes, agree, yeah. And I want to clarify that. You know, I, I just read a report yesterday by, I think, the Independent, a, a, a medical expert, saying maybe 35 million people in Britain suffer some form of mental illness, to which I say nonsense. There are lots of people that do, mm. and they must be taken seriously, they must get treatment, and they must speak to friends and family and, where necessary, medical experts. Let's just put that on the, on the table. But it seems to me a lot of people in this modern era now are being led into the thought process that every part of life's travails, the normal rough and tumble of life, has to now be categorised as mental illness, and I don't think that is helpful either. All I would say debate. is, um, we had a little conversation off air about your son views things pretty much like I do. Yeah. Is that well, my middle son said, you know, even if, say, my other thing about some celebrities, I think massively exaggerate their problems as a kind of badge of, uh, of celebrity accessory. What I would he said to me, does it matter if, if one person hears Lady Gaga talking about her problems, and she has every problem in the world, uh, and it helps them? Does it matter? I think that's an interesting point. The answer is no, it doesn't matter. I can't speak for every celebrity, ex-footballer, ex-boxer out there. Um, and it, I'm sure there are many people that are very sceptical of, of, of some celebrities that come out and, and throw it all out there. But like I say, if there's a 14 or 15-year-old girl that goes and speaks to a doctor or speaks to her parents or speaks to one of her, her, her friend group, and says that I am struggling on the basis of Lady Gaga speaking out, then, for me, that is a wholly but, positive you know, on thing. this issue of man up, for example, I, I don't like the way that a stiff upper lip, manning up and all that kind of thing, has now become something to be offensive I to I don't people. think it is, Piers. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with But I did all of that. The, the whole point about Mental Health Week, uh, the whole point about um, speaking up and talking out about mental health issues is, is that you shouldn't have to man up, sit there, have a stiff upper lip, you should, at the appropriate time, if you are struggling, go to your doctor, speak to a friend and say, 
But I would say, I would, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. And it's not about telling everybody they have to be a certain way. I just don't think you should also have some stigma about people who do show a bit of stiff upper lip, who do man up, for want of a better phrase, and deal with life's normal problems in a slightly stronger way, perhaps. Because well, someone says, look, I've been there, I've done it, this is how you can deal with it. That also is not a bad thing. It's not, but there isn't one person that I've met in many groups in... I have a lot of current and ex-players that, that will text me now and email that aren't manning up, that aren't going through that process whereby for several years... Well, they need, they need the help and they need people to talk to. I agree, but what happens is when you are keep told by, whether it's Piers Morgan or whether it's somebody on Twitter, man up, it doesn't exist, mm. is that rather than encouraging people to speak out on day one when they're struggling, is that on day 20, you know, we had the Robert Enker situation a few years ago, a German footballer, again, had everything in front of him, threw himself self off a yeah. railway bridge and killed himself. We don't want people yeah. to get to that no, stage. No, we don't, and we're all agreed on that, and it's a, com it's a complex issue.